from a flightless simulator at Ferris Air to a momentous meeting in an alley to the complex mind of an architect to every far sector in space and to the brilliance of the central power battery on OA. This is the podcast that covers the adventures of all of your favorite ring slingers. This is the Emerald Echo with your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of Emerald Echo, a Green Lantern podcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam. And with me, as always, is the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Lantern fans? It's the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy, the podcasting machine, the big nerd in green. It's your personal power battery. It is the Emerald Enthusiast. Today, we have a special guest. We, we do, so go ahead and, and uh, you, you, you've, you've found another one who wants to come on and, and join us. Uh, you, you must be running out of Monopoly money to pay, pay them with, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, tell us who you found and give them the old uh, spectacular introduction as only you can do, Donnie. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all beings of the Omniverse, please welcome to the Emerald Echo, one of the co-founders of the Lantern Cast. You love his videos on Mosaic Comics on YouTube. This is the Green Lantern Guru, Dan the Man Kursky. Thank you, Donnie. I can never live up to that. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, you are a, most welcome, sir. I love your videos, and I have drawn so much inspiration from you as a fellow podcaster. Well, thank you, thank you. It's just it, you know, I started doing it because I wanted to have the kind of conversations and camaraderie that I didn't have being the only the only young person in my town that liked comics growing up, and I found it through the internet, and I wanted to 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 share that experience further you know like like for me early comic book podcasting just being a fan of them was an experience that I didn't know I was desperately missing until I got it so I'm I'm glad to have helped spread that wealth to other people yeah yeah I always wanted to try this and until Adam gave me this opportunity because I didn't want to go it alone and it, this unlocks something in me that, you know, I am indebted to Adam and indebted to people like yourself who came before me, who showed me how to do this gig. So. Well, Donnie, don't give me too much credit. I just saw your, your, your YouTube videos uh, basically reviewing the action figures, which has come back to bite me now because now I'm spending more money than, than I ever thought I would on action figures, but here we are. Um, so uh, it all worked out and, and, uh, yeah, uh, Dan's videos are fantastic, and and uh, if you're a Green Lantern fan, they should definitely be uh, part of your routine. So definitely check them out. Most uh, definitely, Dan. But, can you give us a little bit about your your origin story with Green Lantern or comics, whatever you want to talk about there? Tell us how you came to love the characters in the Green Lantern universe. Ah, uh, well, it was really super friends that introduced me to the concept of Green Lantern. You know, before that, I only have this vague memory of looking through some random Silver Age issue of Justice League and seeing him in there. You know, I've I've tried to figure out what issue it is. The the information just isn't there. I have no idea. But Super Friends, like I I watched and rewatched every rerun of every iteration of Super Friends that existed anytime TV wanted to show them to me. So I saw the I saw the handful of Hal Jordan appearances in there, but I got into the Green Lantern comics for the first time when I was about 10 years old and I was walking through a Toys R Us with my mom. And at the time they had uh, like the end of one of the aisles devoted to a magazine rack full of comics. And they did this thing where they would bundle together four or five issues and sell them as a pack. And, you know, sometimes you get lucky and it would be a full story arc, but usually it was a stack of totally random, unrelated comics. And on this one trip, the comic facing out was Green Lantern number 53, the issue where Kyle was about to be killed by Mongol, but Superman was flying in to save the day. And I saw this and I was totally confused. I didn't, like, that didn't look like the Green Lantern from Super Friends and I didn't know who that villain was and why did Superman have long hair? I had, I had no idea what was happening. So my mom bought it for me and it was kind of the perfect 
entry point for a young kid who knew nothing about Green Lantern, right? Because the whole issue was one big, exciting fight scene drawn by Daryl Banks. And (laughs) the man, the man, yes. The man, yes. And Kyle made it clear that he didn't know any more about Green Lantern than I did, which which made it easy for me to relate to him. But what's funny is that I got the issue out of confusion and reading it answered literally none of my questions and just gave me more of them because the characters in the book were asking things that I never even thought to ask. And I loved it. I had a great time. So I kept reading and it actually took me a long time to even care at all about context. Like I spent years only reading issues with covers I liked, regardless of issue number or the place in the story. Like, <laughs> like if, if I've, I'm thumbing through back issue bins and I see like, oh, here's a five part story arc. And the only cover I l- liked was like part two then I would just read part two. Would I read? Would I read <laughs> there's no the wrong, others? There's no wrong right, way to read, man. <laughs> oh yeah, and what's funny is like some of those stories I still haven't read the other parts of yet. <laughs> it's like yeah, <laughs> and maybe I will, but I don't know. I just I just bounced around and reveled in like the the lack of clarity, and I did eventually finally start following Green Lantern Monthly with uh, issue ninety, which was a uh, it was very much a um you know here's it, a special episode of Green Lantern where we're going to talk about alcoholism, but uh, <laughs> but uh, and but immediately after that was the issue where like mm. Kyle's being tortured by Dasad and we learn things about how the ring works and that's where they establish concretely that it's genetic locked to him and all that uh-huh. stuff and yeah. then you jump yeah. into the Legion crossover and all that and and it was just and, and that's kind of been my trajectory ever since. Awesome. That is awesome. We have very similar journeys. Uh, My start was with Super Friends, too. And I I always, you know, I have liked many of the Green Lantern characters. But on the very first episode of this podcast, I talked about how I was in college before I actually saw a lot of trade paperbacks. And so from there, and of course, this was at the time when Kyle was Green Lantern. So now I go back and get all the trade paperbacks so I can finally understand what what I knew from Super Friends, how that got to Kyle Rayner. Mm. And that yeah. took a while, man. You're talking about, you know, I, I know your pain when you're talking about everything to read out there with Green Lantern. It's complex because the eras are very distinct. They're very distinct and they're very inconsistent about what they collect and how they do it. Uh, exactly. Like you, yeah. if you if you want early, early Silver Age Green Lantern content, you are well fed. They have re- they have collected and repackaged that material in like 10 different ways in like a whole bunch of series of hardcovers and trades that each make it a different amount of time into the series before ending and then just being restarted again later. But like they've only in the last handful of years started to collect the Kyle Rayner series yeah. from yes. the beginning. And it ended prematurely, unfortunately. Yeah. Are they Last, are they yeah. done? With yeah, Kyle Rayner Volume One and Two was collected, and Volume Three got canceled. Oh. Really? Because I oh. know they did um they did the Circle of Fire, and I think they did one other one, but I just assumed that they were picking it up with like a different branding under it. No, I, as far as I know, and I haven't bought that yet. I intend to, but I don't know that that picks up in exactly the same place that volume two ended. I could be wrong. I don't want to mislead anybody, but yeah, there was going to be a volume three because I saw the cover of it and it got canceled. So perhaps this is a rebranding. I haven't like exactly looked at the issues that that's going to cover, but I definitely want that because I love that cover if for no other reason. So yeah, for, for me, my, my comic journey or Green Lantern journey, I should specify. And I've said this uh, several times, but I'll reiterate for anybody that's coming in new and, 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 and fresh. I, my Green Lantern knowledge began with the Justice League animated series. It was very much John. Wow. And I love that series. And then, um, you know, back in the early days of my re-entry into comics, I was strictly, I had five titles, the, the glory days when I had money in my wallet. And it was, uh, <laughs> you know, the five were Batman, Detective, Action, Superman, and Batman, Superman. And uh, then I said, uh, a friend of mine said, you know, you should, 
give Green Lantern a try? And my response was, the, the guy from the cartoon with, with the <laughs> ring? And he's like, yeah, but he's not the one that's in, in the main comic right now. I'm like, all right, well, give me a, give me a, like, sell me on it. Give me like a, a, a description that'll, that'll hook me. And he's like, well, it's, it's, it's basic terms. It's, it's like Star Wars meets Superman. And I'm like, all right, I'm in. Um, <laughs> and, and so I started and I, I, I picked up uh, one of the, one of the trades with Kyle in it. I think it was one of the ones you mentioned. Uh, uh, what did you say? Rain of Fire? I think it was. I can't remember which one it was. Circle it might, of fire? Yeah, Ring of, of, well, sorry, yeah. of yeah, 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 Ring of Fires had its own trade paperback. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, so it was that one. And then as I was, you know, I'm uh, three quarters of the way through, and then I read that they were announcing uh, Green Lantern Rebirth, and so I'm like, well, crap, I might as well start. Yeah, it's a number one. I might as well start with that. <laughs> and then I open it up, and I'm like, wait a minute, who's this Hal guy? <laughs> like, what's, what's, <laughs> what's going on? Why is he dead? Where, like, where am I? I'm confused. Uh, and so, and then I, and then I kept going and I kept going with the monthlies, but yeah, it was very much, I knew John from the cartoon. Then I got introduced to Kyle and then boom, it was like, here's how now. I saw it's been, it's been crazy trying to, uh, catch up on, on the, uh, on, you know, read through the Kyle run. Uh, and now we're getting uh, a little bit of a dose of, uh, of, uh, John uh, Stewart heavy stories, which kind of segues into uh, why we've, we, we, we've, one of the reasons why uh, we, we've brought Dan on, and that is to uh, review the latest issue of the current Green Lantern run that features uh, John Stewart, of course. So, uh, Donnie, as you always do, what's, what's, uh, give us the, uh, the uh, info, the technical info on this, uh, on this book. Okay, this is Green Lantern number 11, of course, written by Jeffrey Thorne and drawn by Tom Brainy and Marco Santucci. Mm. So, you, did, you did very well with the names. <laughs> nothing, nothing stumped you today, Danny. It's good. Yes. Well, now, I still have to ask Marco the name of his wife's, his wife's last name. I'm assuming that, uh, I think it's, Sinapo, and I'm sorry if I butcher her name, but she worked on this too. I just think that's really cool to have a husband and wife team working on a Green Lantern book. Yeah, I didn't realize they were married. That's cool. Yes, yes. Yeah, we had Marco on. Uh, it's been a few months now, right? Uh, yes. Right, Don. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I will say I just looked up the new Kyle Rayner trade paperback, The Power of Ion, and it does not connect to Volume Two of Kyle Rayner. So okay, they are jumping you ahead a little bit. Great. <laughs> Someday so, we'll get there. Someday. More confusion. <laughs> Someday they'll put Kyle in a movie or something. And yeah, then we'll exactly. I was it. just going to say that when I'm about 95, they'll be like, yeah, okay, here we go. Crap. Thanks. I can't read anymore. I can't see anything. <laughs> the thing is that if they, if they ever adapted that Mars banks run, that original run, DC could have their own version of Spider-Man, and I think so many young people would flock to that and just love Kyle's journey to yeah. you know being yeah. a hero. But, I, I would know. agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Here's hoping. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's get back to the current run, Green Lantern number eleven. By the way, I like the fact you were the only other person that I heard Dan point out the fact that on the covers the in the middle of the Green Lantern font, you can see the battery at first like depowering and then exploding and then being empty of energy. And now it's like repowering up. Yeah, I actually didn't even, I think it was either this issue or the last issue where I noticed like, oh, it's it's filling back up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's funny because Donnie, you mentioned that on one of the episodes we did. Yeah, the, like, our oh, last episode. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, if, if you think that I don't spend time like just like staring at Green Lantern covers and like doing nothing else, you're wrong because I do. I just put them there and I just yeah, stare when, at them. When, like, when, he, when he's not convincing me to buy action figures, that, that's what he did. <laughs> you should probably buy another action figure while we're recording this. I, right? I may very well do that. <laughs> so if I go dead silent, either something's wrong or I'm buying an action figure. <laughs> well, you know, I'll go in next week and, you know, look for that savage He-Man, but I oh, digress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You so not. back to Green Lantern number 11 before we lose everybody here. Um, <laughs> so 
this scene opens with John saying he can see Oa as we kind of saw this scene in the previous issue. And Lonar points out the fact that he is not omniscient. He says, you know, John, I'm the God of journeys, but I don't see and know everything. I'm not the God of like explanations. And so under the influence of the anti-guardian, we see Oa, which looks like a giant version of screaming Mimi from the Mad Balls. So um, bad things are amiss here. So Dan, what's your take on like the opening couple pages? I mean, I understand completely why everyone in the universe doesn't really like the Guardians having all this power. <laughs> I mean, the, an entire planet is a massive screaming head that's spitting yes. fire into space. Yeah, yes. no, they should, they should, uh, they should demand that the Green Lantern Corps maybe tone it down a little bit. Yeah, just, <laughs> exactly. Just a tad. Just, just... I really, I want to. I want to shout out before I forget the colorist oh, yeah. on this, Mike Atia. Yes. Because, like, especially, like, it, it's been more noticeable since John's ascension, where every issue has had more and more moments of just like really, really like heightened moments that are being propped up by the color choices and like the just, just the the extra oomph they give everything it's so and, vibrant i love it you, yeah you and like sometimes it. it's like it helps bring out the background and like make it feel like a more like lived in like world but like it, when you see things like oh koyos's face engulfing oa and erupting with power like it feels so much more extreme because of the colorist here and like like I, I can, every time I think about this this book's artwork now, I think back to a couple issues ago when Joe was being shown the illusion of Sorcerer's World, and it oh, was this yeah. incredibly. Yeah. It reminded me of of uh, that first shot we ever saw of Odom during the Jeff Johns run, mm. and it was just like this lush paradise with colors that can't possibly exist in nature, but you wish they could after seeing it, yeah. and like this, like the colors, especially in like the last quarter of this arc have just taken it up several notches mm -hmm. and if there's one franchise out there that if the colorist doesn't get it right then it can sink the book but if a colorist does his or her job well it can just enhance everything and i think that's what we saw here is just how beautiful these colors are on this run yeah oh yes it, it, this is one of you know i, I a lot of people like revel in the fact that they, they have these um, black and white books. You know, that's that's a thing now. But it, the Green Lantern is a book that I'd never want to see in black and white. It's like, no, no, no. Like, give, give me the colors. Give me give me all the vibrant colors, all, all the distinct looks. I would love to see. Like, there's there's a trend that's been going on for the last year or so, where which started with, like, you know, you know harley quinn black white red and then yeah. marvel did a bunch of those with like wolverine and moon knight or whatever mm -hmm. and like imagine a green lantern book that was visually designed from the ground up to only incorporate the color like black and white art with splashes of green i'd um, buy it that could be interesting well donnie if you, you saying you'd buy something green lantern is is really our audience is falling out of their chairs collectively. I can, <laughs> I can see it. But no, yeah, no, that would be cool. I, I, I will I will say. By the way, the title of this story, and I don't know how to pronounce, I believe it's Latin, and I'm going to do my best here. Do you know how to speak Latin, by the way, Dan? I, 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 I took two years of Latin in high school. Okay. So no. I don't. Okay. <laughs> right, exactly. yeah. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to give this my best. And I'm sorry for all you actual Latin speakers out there. I believe it is pronounced Viridus Ecus, which translates, I believe, to either Green Knights or Green Cavalry. Yeah. When I looked it up, the first thing I got was Green Horse. And I'm like, that can't be right. No. <laughs> so, so I think it's Green Knight. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now we see here uh, the anti-guardian being Koyos say, and, and this was kind of repeated from last the last issue, we are the rot at its core. We are the blight, meaning that Koyos believes that the guardian's establishment of order in the universe 
has done more harm than good. Mm. Obviously echoed by the bright circle, the magic users. So he's still, you know, just uh, reinforcing that point and screaming that at the guardians and the green lanterns and everybody who's around there. He's saying, you know, I have to hit the reboot. I have to hit the reset button. And that's why I'm here. And I'm not going to go anywhere until this is done. So is he a stand in for Dan DiDio? Because. Oh boy. He wants to, hit, wants to hit the reboot button. <laughs> the reset button sounds familiar. <laughs> it's a, I don't think he's going to give us any variant covers to be, you know, <laughs> soften the blow. He's wearing a different hat than Dan DiDio always okay, wore. Yeah, so right, yeah, right. <laughs> I like yeah. how this, this, you know, they kind of have it both ways here because they're the situation seems to blatantly frame Koyos as the villain, but when you put his what he's saying into the larger context of like you know even just even just in terms of magic how like the guardians basically looked at a fundamental force of the universe and said now we don't like that and ripped it out of creation Mm -hmm. to make the universe more like like they just moved into a house and wanted to knock a wall down like they like the bad guys in this story are kind of right. It's just kind of a matter of how extreme are they willing to get to put everything back. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot like, you know, Atrocitus. When Atrocitus tells you why he's angry, you're like, yep, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's like, no, man, I'm on your side. Could you maybe kill like two or three fewer people, though? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's like, I get what you, I get why you're doing it. Just tone it down, you know, a notch. Yeah. yeah. Focus that anger, you know, at a, at a select core of people. Here's a stress ball. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a, it's one that it's one of those where like a little clown head kind of puffs out its eyes and nose when you squeeze it. You, 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 yeah. You'll have fun with it. I can know, confirm like... stress balls don't help me much. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> then again, it might be the hockey team that I watched. The, the more of the oh, that's more. yeah, that's a whole different podcast. Then the stress oh, ball, boy, but yeah. I digress. Yeah, <laughs> Atrocitus getting really mad, just sitting there seething, playing with his fidget cube. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Lantern logo. Yes, he like. <laughs> I would love that. Oh my goodness. So, so we also see the we also you mentioned Odom, I believe earlier, Dan. Oh yes. Um, I'm wondering, like, what. We talked to Jeff a little bit about this. We haven't yet seen any Blue Lanterns or the Blue Lantern battery. We actually did see the battery in this, which I'm wondering if it's functional at this point. But what do you think is going to be the role of the Blue Lanterns in this? What's your take? I don't know if they're going to have anything to do with next issue or the resolution of this arc. I'm just kind of floored at the revelation that this exists. Because the last time we saw Odom was in New Guardians yep. before Kyle became a White Lantern when it got the planet got overrun by the Reach and their army of Blue Beetle Scarabs. And what I'm wondering is like, is this the battery that was left there? Because they, ne- they were not able to take their central battery with them when they evacuated Odom. They're be- and their, uh, their second planet, which I always forget their second homeworld's name, but it... um. It did have a, fun- a functional blue central battery there, but that was destroyed by Relic later right. on in the New Guardian series. So it makes me think, oh, maybe, like, I don't know what happened to the Reach, but maybe that's the original blue battery that's back on Odom again. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm not sure who that Guardian is that's next to it. Maybe it's Sade because there is a, uh, uh, John does say like, oh, I can see Sade somewhere, but doesn't specifically say where. Mm-hmm. Maybe she's growing her hair out a little bit. I don't know. But a, I am just like, this was the thing in this issue that jumped out at me the most because like, I love the Blue Lantern Corps. I've been wanting to see them come back in some form for a very long time. Likewise, yeah. I want St. Walker to stop being sad. (laughs) (laughs) And hopefully, like, I just keep keep hoping, hope, hope, hope. I keep (laughs) hoping (laughs) that, okay, we we haven't seen St. Walker on in a comic for a very long time maybe off page he has been doing something to build the ranks back up again and maybe this is a sign of that Mm -hmm. yeah i have almost been wondering like at what point in the last few years he was going to show up and say okay well the blues you know we are deactivated right now i'm the only one left can i have a green lantern ring or something i kept expecting that somehow 
but they haven't used him. So I would be overjoyed if he would come back to the Green Lantern it, mythos it, at this point in any way. It's been a couple of years, hasn't it? The- I think it's been since Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, right? Yes, I think that was the last time we saw him. That And it seemed like he, like Kyle tried to bring the Blue Lanterns back and it, it was blocked somehow. We got the, the inference that it was uh, Dr. Manhattan, but then things kind of dropped after that. And that was the last time I think we saw uh, St. Walker or any of the Blue Lanterns, obviously, because most of them were killed. So. Yeah, I think. No, go ahead. I think by that point, he was the last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I really love that, that sort of philosophy, that mantra, you know, all will be well. The problem with that is you read that and then you look outside in the real world and you're like, really? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. We could use, we could when, use St. Walker when, right now. When, when, when is this supposed to happen? Because it doesn't look like it. Yeah. So back to the issue, we see that, you know, the anti-Guardian talks about wanting to purge every remnant of the Guardians of the universe down to like their DNA, every molecule, purge it from the universe. That's the only way that things can be made right. Mm -hmm. Um, So obviously things are very dire there. At the same time, we see, again, the Justice League, a version of the Justice League has arrived from Earth, uh, I'm assuming, and we see that Joe is actually starstruck by the Flash. And it's like, yeah, I want a selfie. If, if we survive this, can I get a selfie? So I like that little like splash of humor here in the yeah. midst of this like huge apocalyptic battle scene. And Flash's reaction really got me where he's like, where he says to Hal, he's like, Hal, I like, I like the new kid. And, he, and then Hal's like, I remember not too long ago when you were the new kid, uh, because yeah. obviously it, it's, um, it's uh, Wally is the Flash here. Um, spoilers uh, for anybody that's right. not current. <gasps> uh, and I know, shock, God forbid, anybody keeps up with comics. Um, By the way, that that current Flash book is good and it is a Wally. I, lo- I love it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, yep. And know. Wally West is the Flash again, and it is. It's he's got his family back, and it's basically yeah. everything that I've been holding out for. Yeah. Yeah, we, by the way, Donnie, now Dan's reminded me, we've got to get back to doing that, that book. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about that exact same thing, volume three, because we were covering that for a while. Yeah, we yeah, got to get back yeah, to do that yeah. too. So, and, uh, but no, so I, I, I like that whole, that, that whole exchange. And, you know, guys, it was really shocking that we, we saw Hal here and he was very much, the way I remember how treated with so much, you know, respect, uh, and it honored some of the, you know, the, the past storytelling with certain mm-hmm. aspects of it uh, that maybe we can dive into. But I remember the internet for uh, I, almost a year ago was telling <laughs> me that that Jeff Thorne hated Hal Jordan and he was going to kill him and he was going to do all kinds of things. And I'm like, somebody got something wrong. It might have been right. the internet. I'm not sure, but you know. <laughs> Well, I addressed that on the last podcast. There was this rumor floating around forever that in issue number one of this run that Hal Jordan was killed by Red Lanterns. Obviously, that was not the case, but people will seem to say or do when they're upset and Mm -hmm. we've seen toxic fandoms. And I'm not saying that about the majority of the Green Lantern fans because I love this fandom and I have been uh, embraced with open arms. I love that people come to me and show me their Green Lantern tattoos and collections and ask me questions but there's a small percentage of people who were just absolutely inconsolable when they heard jeffrey thorne was taken over and there were all these rumors out there that were obviously not true yeah Yeah, and i think i think jeffrey thorne has said once that he doesn't really like hal jordan which honestly is fine because like i know like as fans we tend to we tend to believe that anyone who's going to write our favorite character or franchise must have an inherent love and fandom of that thing just like we do yeah yes but what we forget is like no they just need to be like a good writer who understands how to use characters like one of my favorite green lantern runs of all time very quickly became far sector and nk jemison man you got good taste (laughs) and and um I saw an interview with N.K. Jemison where she talked about how, be- like, before 
accepting the job of writing that book, her only experience with Green Lantern was having like a vague notion of who Jon Stewart was because of the Justice League cartoon. Mm -hmm. And she, and she was still able to like, okay, well, she did her own research, came up with a setting and a story that made sense and, and knocked it out of the park. Like being a fan of these specific characters is not actually a requirement to tell a good story with these characters. You just have to understand them. Yes. And Jeff always said, when he said, look, I don't like how Jordan, he always ended those, those statements by saying, but I'm a professional kids. I know what I'm doing. Obviously he does. This guy has been in entertainment for decades. He knows how to produce a good quality story. Yeah. So, all right. So back to the issue. One of the things I want to point out here, and I wish the pages were numbered in this, but it's, it's the page right before we get the uh, the Batman Black Label, Batman the Imposter, um, uh, that that uh, whatever you want to call that that splash page in there that's advertising. Advertisement. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we get we get a a series of panels here. It's three equally sized panels, and I like how this is set because you have the Anti Guardian on one side, you have Nemesini on the other side, and in the middle is Joe. And we know that Joe's ring is playing a pivotal role in this story. And I like because you can look at that and almost tell what's going on here is that she's caught in this tug of war between these two guardians. Yeah. So I really like that. That's a yeah. good catch. Yeah. So we also see at this point that we've got different planets and races, the controllers, the Zamorans, Maltusians, and Odom. They're all being like atomized by this energy that is coming out of the anti guardian. Now, one of the other things we see here is that right before Nemosini, like she's in the middle of like being what it looks like is like she's being atomized too or transported or something away. She looks at Joe and says, Your ring can still, but she doesn't get to finish the sentence. Mm. So, Dan, what was your take on what she said there or what she was going to say? So I think uh, I think it comes a couple of pages later, but I think what we find out what Koyos is doing is he's absorbing all of the Guardian stuff, like their DNA, their technology, all of it into himself so that he can destroy himself and thus erase his entire peoples from it existence and all i can think is that since we find out that from counselor fell that joe's ring is made from a mix of guardian technology and quardian Mm -hmm. weaponers of quard designs maybe that's supposed to be like a rogue element that throws off the mix like if koyos's whole deal is that he's able to absorb just owen stuff then maybe throwing in some quardian stuff in the mix will make the whole thing blow up or something i don't know well we know that quardian rings that they have like a mystical quality to them so is joe's ring even though at this by the end of the issue by the way it's seemingly the power it's seemingly gone Mm. can she somehow rebuild it with some kind of mystical magical energy that it is in addition to the green lantern energy because we know her ring is different it's not connected to the central power battery but we we only have glimpses as to how different it is at this point yeah 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 i think that's the like you like there was alluded to is there a mystical element to it that that can counteract what's happening here because I, i mean Clearly, the mystery of her, her ring and, and its origins and all that has been a central uh, um, component all the way going back to, uh, to Far Sector. So, you know, to see that play or paid off here would be, would be quite interesting. Um, and uh, I also like the moment where, Donnie, you said maybe she could rebuild it or, or what have you. But... Remember, even there was the moment in this issue where Hal was trying to rebuild his own or get mm-hmm. it to or get it to start working again, and she's like, "You can do that," and he's like, "Apparently not." But but it's calling, 
it's calling back to the continuity of, I believe it was, uh, wasn't that part of Robert Venditti's run? What, re what rebuilding the ring from yeah. like, yeah. Well, there's been several instances. Kyle did that once too. His ring was smashed right. into just no, like little atoms. Of, to yeah. how, to how, wasn't that? Wasn't yes, that I believe so. And, yeah. and I looked at that as maybe Hal Jordan saying, you know, like maybe a, a way of kind of providing the blueprint of this is how we can do it. And I can't do it with what is available yeah. to me, but maybe because your ring is different and your Green Lantern experience is different, maybe you can do this. Yeah. So that same panel was also a callback to the Morrison run because yeah. he references being cut off from the cosmic grail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, right. I, yeah. I, I like the uh, continuity polls there. It's, it's, it, this, this also served as like a nice way to reset Hal Jordan a little bit because, like, <clears throat> it's like, okay, all right, he has a special ring because he was made of willpower for a while and right. then he forged a ring out of his own willpower which means his ring kind of is a piece of him so when he mm -hmm. dies he can't die but then also there's the stuff with the cosmic grail and whatever happened in the morrison run this this is like okay you know what let's shoot him with magic and the ring <laughs> is gone so we can just give him a regular ring again <laughs> Right. Yeah. And that was a callback. You know, we saw the arrows in that's what originally, you know, Koyos was hit with in the first issue. And right. we saw that again here, you know, the magic arrows being used. I like that, you know, the kind of continuity there. So, yeah. well, we also have at this point, again, John is not, you know, in John is not on Oa at this point. And we see, though, that John has a choice to make. He's still with Lonar and Isak. And John, though, again, we said at the beginning, he said, I see Oa. And, you know, he said, you know, at this point, and Lonar is like, you know, you have, a, you know, you have a path to walk. You have a decision to make here, you know. And he almost sounds like Yoda. If you leave now, help them, you could. But destroy all you have fought and suffered. And he's like, no, no, no. I've got to go to my friends right now because I'm a Green Lantern and that's what we do. And without using a boom tube, without using a wormhole or anything, John is there. He possesses that kind of power now. I did have to roll my eyes a little bit because Lonar took a moment to say like, hey, wait a second. Don't go. This, yeah. the, we're not done yet. The real thing I was preparing you for is over there. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, Never yeah, mind. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, so I guess we're going to deal with that later. Later on. I did like the humor, though, as we saw, you know, that that portion of the story in. He took time to look at Isak and say, have I told you how much you suck lately? <laughs> 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 that wasn't exactly He's like, I told you how much I dislike you. But yeah, 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 that's what I took from it. By the way, Isak, I haven't told you enough lately that you suck. <laughs> so, yeah. So now at this point, we see that there's going to be a purge strike called against Oa. Um, and obviously that kind of language, that means things are very serious here. That means everybody on the surface. Now, I'm not sure if a purge strike would even kill the anti-guardian, but pretty much everybody down there that is a living sentient being, if we see that purge strike, everybody dies. Yeah. So. And it's especially bad news since Koyos's first eruption of energy knocked out most of the tech on oa so no one on the surface can communicate with any of those ships no and we see that it, it's what it's called as a nova level plasma barrage that sounds awful so <laughs> Very like, ominous. nothing's going to survive so yeah i, I so, could see i could see all the lantern fans trying to figure, scramble to figure out where their favorite is to make sure they're not there. Like, okay, it's mine to survive. Like, where, who's where? Where's this person and that person? So, yeah. So, and we see that actually at this point, you know, we reference them not being powered because of their, you know, their rings basically right. being gone. Hal and Joe are depowered on the surface of Oa. And so, if we have this purge strike, seemingly they're not going to survive. Right, And we see the anti-guardian, again, still saying, if I can't change the past, I can erase all changes and gift the future to everyone. So he's convinced that what he's doing is right, as a lot of villains are, regardless of how many people have to die in the process. 
You know, he's convinced that he's right. And then all of a sudden, and I, I can almost hear the music, if you smell, <laughs> and here comes John Stewart. Um, <laughs> sorry, but that's when, when I read that panel, all of a sudden John's there throwing hands. That's all I could think about was the Rock's theme song. Anyway, so, but John at this point. If they ever do is, an audio version of this issue, they should put that in there. <laughs> oh, boy. But so John at this point, he is a giant bursting with green energy and he comes in fist and fury on the anti-guardian and we get this massive battle so what was your impressions of that dan this whole like this issue gives me like avengers endgame vibes Mm. where it's just like hey it's this like one final like two two armies crashing against each other here's like a couple kaijus fighting in the background like it's just it's just another layer of like cool stuff we can throw at, into the mix. Mm-hmm. Like I I didn't expect John like I knew he was going to show up and and deal with Koyos. I didn't think he was going to be the size of Godzilla and fist fighting him, <laughs> which is even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's like that's the kind of those are the kind of visuals that the only other place you can see them in the DC universe is probably if you're dealing with you know uh, some of the new gods characters but but you know th- that's the beauty of 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 the green lantern uh you know ip for me is that you can see stuff like this and and, and it's like you just buy into it yeah and you i was totally it's like you, you the, the avengers end game reference is, is kind of is, is kind of I think very appropriate because it was just like all this this crazy action was happening you know as you're turning each page and it's like this is awesome like this is, this is so immersive this is great this issue was like a nice dose of just pure fun yeah it's like so much of the last year of this book has been kind of like tense and trying to figure out like what's going on behind the scenes what what cloak and dagger stuff is do we have to worry about and and it's all under this like kind of dour umbrella of you know the green lantern core is gone what what's going to be the future of the green lantern core but then we get into this big fight and it's it's the most like like just have fun with the big pile of action figures kind of fight that you could have, you know, like, yeah. like we're going to take all of our toys and we're just going to use all of them. And we're just going to have a good time. Like we talked before about like the, the passing remarks between like Hal and Barry and, or um, Wally and uh, Wally and Joe and how like, you know, they're, they're in the middle of this chaos and they're still smiling because they're, they're superheroes in a big dumb superhero fight and it's awesome yeah <laughs> well yeah and i love the the one image it's right before the page the the advertisement for the represent graphic novel you see the anti-guardian basically light is coming out of every like orifice it's coming out of the central power battery on his chest and his mouth and his eyes and his hands and he's like bombarding john with this yes and i was like okay that's just cool i'm sorry <laughs> Oh, it was his weird squid hat is shooting light out of its mouth. <laughs> Which can, can I ask you guys? Like, I have until this issue, I had no idea what that thing on his head was supposed to be. But like, when Counselor Fell breaks down what the powers that are inside of Koyos, she ch- she checks off the uh, the anti chaos weapon from issue one. Is that mm-hmm. what the yellow thing on his head is? Because that weapon, like I never, I didn't have a face when we saw it the first time. <laughs> yeah, I still, I, I haven't. I'm assuming it's something like that. I have not found the name, and I've, and I've done a lot of like research trying to find out what kind of like entity, animal, race, whatever that would be. And I didn't want to resort to like badgering Jeffrey Thorne about it. I have to like stop myself and say, hey, hey, <laughs> a- answer all my questions on Twitter, man. Um, by the way, I actually did contact him though, and I have something to uh, to tell everybody at the end of this podcast. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I don't exactly know what that is. That it may be that that I, is- I know what the spoiler is. He's he's putting a restraining order out on Donnie. That's good. <laughs> he won't be the first. He won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to say too. So 
yeah, she talked, Amara Collin talked about integrating spectral energies, that that's what the anti-guardian is doing, not mm. just like the, the power battery, but also that mystical energy, like absorbing all that and assuming like to like change it and destroy it mm. and maybe give it back to the bright circle. And that's the deal they're talking about. Well, the deal is they, they went along with this because he told them the star heart exists, mm -hmm. but they don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. So if they help him, he will give them the hookup and say like, hey, the star heart is on earth. Go find this guy. His name's Alan Scott. He's a very snappy dresser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that like the, the deal that they are holding out to be paid back on is like just knowing where to even find the magic that was ripped out of the universe. Why do I feel there's a major double cross coming somewhere? Like, wait, you know. Oh God, yeah. These oh, yeah. two entities making a deal, yeah, and never ends well. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean, you know, evil characters—they have a habit of double crossing one another. Yeah, but... they're not the most trustworthy individuals, you know. That's right. <laughs> so back to the issue, though, we see. At one point, Joe was like, you know, I have this Hail Mary play. And she runs to Kelly, who is still unconscious, and basically starts to communicate with her and says, we need your help. And at the same time, you know, John and the Anti-Guardian are continuing to fight. The Anti-Guardian is seemingly like powering up because you can start to see the light like actually showing through his face. You can see his skull. And so, like, he's getting more and more powerful. This energy is gathering. And my favorite line from this comic, though, and I loved it so much, is that John admits that the Guardians made mistakes. Well, we all know that. But John talks about the Green Lantern Corps, and he's like, we're the last line, the first defenders. We're the light in the shadows. Oh, I love that line. How beautiful is that? Very, yes. Yeah, uh, it's great stuff. So it's actually at this point, we mentioned it earlier that we see how Jordan tried to unsuccessfully reform his ring. And so Joe is able to unlock the energy from Kelly's gauntlet. You see Kelly's gauntlet snap open, even mm -hmm. though she is still unconscious. Yeah, this and <clears throat> this is something i have to kind of knock the issue on unfortunately because like the this should have been simon's moment not joe's because simon like over the course of this series simon has built up a bond and a trust with kelly mm -hmm. to the point that he has in fact successfully reached out to her and, and made contact with her while she was in her coma before mm -hmm. in like a very similar situation to this mm -hmm. so he can do this Joe, like the two of them never really had the opportunity to form the kind of bond or trust that would let her get through to Kelly like this. And I understand wanting to give this moment to Joe because she's the other like main character of this arc, but mm -hmm. it kind of felt like, oh, this could have and probably should have been Simon. I think they, they said it in the issue. I think she didn't, didn't Joe say it. I wish this was Simon. Uh, yeah, I actually believe that. Yeah, yeah. she said uh, she she was like, yeah, but he's he's like unconscious somewhere, is or she didn't know where he was. That's what it was. He's on the surface somewhere, but she didn't didn't know where he was. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. I mean, yeah, I really did like the writing, the bond that was formed between Simon and Kelly because that was like an older brother or a friendship type of thing. Whereas Joe and Kelly, it's kind of um you know, a, a maternal type thing where Joe, where Joe, who doesn't really know what she's doing when it comes to a little kid is like, you know, trying to do her best, but she obviously doesn't want to. Whereas yeah. Simon seems to genuinely like Kelly. So, yeah. yeah. So we see at the end, and, and by the way, okay. So Joe, Joe is powered up at this point, I guess, seemingly wearing the gauntlet. We see her, or I don't know if she's wearing the gauntlet or, or if she just has enough power and she makes like a construct kind of like the gauntlet. What was your take on that, Dan? I assumed that she was wearing it, but based on the final page of this issue, I don't know because we see her being carried off, not wearing it. Not yeah, wearing so, it. Yeah. That's, so, that's what I thought too. I thought she was wearing it, but then it's like, okay, maybe not. Yeah. And I mean, so that maybe, was, yeah, that maybe, was my question. 
yeah, maybe she was wearing it or maybe the fact that it opened up let her just like access the energy inside it and send out a construct. Mm-hmm. But at that point, I don't know why the construct would be wearing it. Right. But I don't know. It could. There's. Yeah, this issue ends with a big swirling ball of mystery. So maybe it's in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's actually how we get to the end. We see this giant version of Joe, and she uses a punch. It kind of reminded me of the Terminatrix in in uh, Terminator Three and the cop car, where she like punches through the cop, you know, yeah, and yeah, drives yeah. the car. It reminded me of that. And so. She attacks from behind. John is, of course, still in front of the anti-guardian. And he starts to say, I can see what's in you. And that's how things end, you know, the the swirling ball of energy that Dan talked about in multiple colors, by the way. And I I always pay attention to colors in Green Lantern, you know, uh, 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 books, because a lot of times that's a big part of the story is what color is something. You see that kind of explode and we don't know who on the surface survived. We don't know exactly what happened. That's the mystery. By the way, this is the moment when the central battery is destroyed. Everybody freak was freaking out back in issue two because they're like, oh, the central battery blew up. Well, no, it was just stolen. Now it was destroyed because right. Gigantic Joe did a Mortal Kombat <laughs> fatality and shattered it. Yeah. Yeah. And it says actually that the, on that note, it says that the name for the next issue translates to new light. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I wonder, are we going to lose Oa? Because that, that, uh, that Nova volcano strike or whatever, it, like there's no reason it wouldn't still be coming. Like the, the ships, like I think, um, What's her name? The Thanag Aryan in charge of the United Planets Brigade. America. Like, yeah, like her. Yeah. Like I she's called her not hot girl. That's what yeah. I call her. <laughs> <I can't remember. laughs> um, she made some comment about how like like she was basically just broadcasting out into the void, saying, mm-hmm. like, look, our our communications are down, our sensors are down. We don't know what's going on down there, but we can't let it continue. So we're going to bombard the planet. Mm. As far as I know. They're still going to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, I I don't think the people on Oa are going to die. I think, like, maybe, like, the Justice League can leave the way they came and take everybody with them through a Dr. Fate portal. But mm-hmm. they still got to deal, deal with the Bright Circle before that, too. But mm-hmm. it makes me wonder, like, are we going to see Koyos get a lot of what he wanted? Since, like, well, now the central battery has gone. The last two Green Lantern core rings are gone. Oa is about to get just wiped clean, basically. You know what the like next issue is going to be like a a it has the potential to be like a, an almost total blank slate for John to build some whatever he thinks should come after it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I, and that's what I was gonna. I, I mean, I was gonna ask you guys what you thought because you know after twelve, which comes out i think what is it march 29th yeah dan actually put that he tweeted that yeah. uh what earlier today or yesterday that the issue had been delayed from the 15th to the 29th right. and that's a- that's after it was delayed from i think the first to the 15th yes. so yes. this book has has moved an entire month without le- leaving that month <laughs> yeah so my question is you know solicitations have come out for um for uh april and may and there's no green lantern book Mm -hmm. so what do you think that all means for for you know green lantern as a book well let's let our guest answer with what what he thinks and then i'll tell you a little bit about my conversation with jeff thorne okay all right all right mr name drop all right right. (laughs) yeah you're doing it now i think like because when when we first like the first round of solicitations with no Green Lantern in it came around the same time that we found out that, oh, the Justice League is dying in, yeah. in uh, I think, April. And yeah, yeah. it looks like Jon Stewart might be in that mix, too, based on some variant covers. <clears throat> and <clears throat> and Jeffrey Thorne had made a comment on Twitter about how, like, oh, this is news to me. I didn't know about that. And like between that and the fact that that issue 12 is the end of the arc, 
and it made it created like a lot of concern of like oh man is green lantern getting canceled is thorn getting fired what's going on what's happening and now that we're like more than a month past that i feel like it might be more related to just avoiding spoilers for other story arcs because the the death of the justice league is part of the lead in to dark crisis which is their big summer event and you know as as far as i'm concerned the lack of solicitation like there's probably a number of things that they're doing that did not make it to solicitations because it would spoil something okay so in my mind the way the where the place my mind is in right now at least for another 30 seconds until donnie tells me what jeffrey thorne said is that um either they're they're holding back solicitations so as not to spoil something for Dark Crisis or they're holding back solicitations because something awesome is going to happen in issue 12 of Green Lantern that they don't want to spoiler. But I am, I am right now firmly in the camp of the book isn't going away. It's just spoilers reasons. Okay. All right. All right. It's, it's... Likewise, I think we might get a small break, but it's not a cancellation. It's okay. to avoid giving away plans much like we saw earlier this year with the annual giving away part of the story they don't want that obviously with the death death of the justice league so yeah so you know how if you've read jeffrey thorne's work if you've read this book over the last year you know how he has a habit of answering a question and at the the same time simultaneously posing a larger question and so you're like oh okay wait a minute what so this is what his answer was to me when I said, hey, anything you want to tell the Green Lantern fandom in preparation for issue 12? And he said, we can all count higher than 12. <laughs> that's, what his, <laughs> that's what his answer was to me. And I'm like, okay, I can do cryptic. Sure, sure. <laughs> we can <sighs> all count higher than 12. God. So that kind of gives me hope that Maybe he has a second arc that's been greenlit. So issue 13 is somewhere. Yeah, then, that he yeah. can't say that. So Okay. Right. He he has said in the past that his uh his story was envisioned as a three arc thing. And this is the first 12 issues is just the first arc. Okay. Like, right. And like any anybody who's been wondering where's Kyle and Guy, apparently they're supposed to be to come back into things in arc number two. All right, DC, now you better give us the arc number two. What the hell? I'll tell you something I'm looking forward to. Like the real thing that makes it kind of painful to see the issue 12 keep getting pushed back is that uh, over on Patreon, Jeffrey Thorne has like a free a free like blog where he just he does thorough breakdowns of the thought process and the meaning of different breaking things. Down 12 yet? <laughs> no, well, that's oh. the thing. Cause like after he did issue six, I think it was, he said like, okay, things are about to start popping off. I'm not going to do another one of these until the arc is over. Okay. Because like at that point, when you're in the second half of the story, if you start talking about like the reasons behind all of the stuff you're doing, you're just going to be telling people what the end of the story is. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. right, every time, every time this book gets pushed back, I have to wait another half a month to see. <laughs> I want to know about issue seven, damn it. You tell me. <laughs> right. So those should start up again, I guess, in April right. <laughs> once we have issue 12 out. All right. Yeah, that's I, I've seen. Some, I've seen some of that blog, and that's one of the few chances that Jeffrey Thorne knows how to answer questions in a way that doesn't give anything away. And if you see him on social media, obviously he's understandably guarded about his story. And it's like you know, I I always envision him like I, I hope he doesn't like speak this like cryptically to his wife like i could just see his wife coming in and say hey jeff you want some eggs for breakfast and him and he's like existence must pass through the veil of the unicorn to the apex <laughs> mountain of the unsustainable web and she's like what and i'm like <laughs> Is that a that's, yes actually, or no? <laughs> that's actually one of the chances you can see him kind of break things down like his thought process like point by point as to how he gets to these very complex stories so i definitely like that yeah and anybody who hasn't seen these yet uh, it's on Patreon. It's you don't have to pay for this this uh, this blog. These uh, the breakdowns is just uh, just look up Thorn Identity 
mm-hmm. on uh, Patreon, and you'll yeah. you'll find it right there. All well, the Green Lantern stuff are together. Yeah. Well, your 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 his little cryptic message gave me hope. So yes, uh, we can all count higher than twelve, and I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> yes. But hopefully, he's literally giving us hope, and not and not introduce reintroducing the Blue Lanterns just to wipe them out a third time. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that, yeah. That would be that would be devastating. But oh, for for that matter, like the so the last the last panel we see of odom in this book is the this kind of beautiful page where it shows you know on one half is like the uh, i'm trying to find it again but on one half of the page is is the blue lanterns on the other half is the star sapphires on zamaron Mm -hmm. and oh actually it's not that page it's the other it's the page after it the bottom of the page is just like everybody is getting like absorbed one molecule at a time and it looks really painful and you just see this blue lantern guardian in front of the battery just looking down and being kind of sad and it's like oh it's happening again isn't it yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, (laughs) Yeah. just kind of meditating and accepting his or her end so yeah Yeah. Yeah. but more than that like i'm looking at this i'm thinking i'm seeing like the zamorons and the star sapphires also getting wrecked by this Mm -hmm. and i'm thinking to myself i know jeffrey thorne isn't a fan of there being tons and tons of lanterns but like come on man this issue came out the day after valentine's day you can't kill the star sapphires (laughs) powered by love on valentine's (laughs) day (laughs) i love it that's a great point man that's that's uh, that's, yeah oh that's that's pretty pretty vicious yeah (laughs) Um, (laughs) twist in the knife but speaking of, I got. I just want to. Before we do our rating and, and do our fi- our final uh, plugs and stuff, um, I just got to say, I'm I'm purchasing Green Lantern digitally, and I'd like to make a plea to Amazon and Comicsology to fix their setup and do it quickly, because they've they've now the Comicsology website has been absorbed right into Amazon. Yes, I've heard about the problems that they've, they've tried had. Recently. To make it all one thing, and oh, yeah. they used to have this great, this great like um, guided view, like zoom in feature. And for whatever reason, it's available on some pages but not on others, and it's a real pain in the rear end to navigate. And I'm trying to be polite as possible, <laughs> um, so please fix this because there are some pages where there's so much on the page. And the words are so like small that listen, I've got glasses, but like they don't have a zoom, you, you know, friggin' like I'm not Superman. I can't, I can't be focused <laughs> to, to that degree. Like there's, I can't see some words, damn it. So fix <laughs> yeah. your, fix your, your, your zoom in feature and let's get it going. Like I, it's just, it's a terrible new, and I know they said they're working on it, but like, come on. Yeah, I've been all digital since, like, well, I guess for the last few years since I really got back into comics, but, like, the, and I've been doing exclusively comicsology. Yeah. And, like, the thing, the the real frustrating thing about it is that Amazon bought them in 2014 and has just been kind of leaving them alone and collecting the money, which they could have just kept doing. Yeah, which is a great strategy, in my opinion. Yeah, and like I, like I, the the experience I've had since the changeover happened is that if you're reading your books on a tablet, the experience is still pretty passable as long as you don't want like any like extravagant features. If you just want to be able to turn pages and pinch to zoom in and out, and turn sideways to see like a double page spread you're okay if you're on a tablet if you're trying to read on a computer screen you are screwed yeah that, because, that's where i am yeah yeah because like <clears throat> the the double page spreads on a computer screen are just they are shrunk down to fit complete in the space of a single page yeah it, it and it doesn't have like the the feature like DC uh, DC Infinite where you can uh, ha- like have a panel by panel breakdown. No, like you no, can, it doesn't have that. Oh. You can if on like a on a regular page if you want to zoom in on this specific panel, you can double click it and it'll zoom in, 
yeah. then you can hit like the turn page button to just cycle through the, the series of panels in order. But for a double page spread, it just gives you a shrunken JPEG that is the size of a single panel on a regular page. Oh, yeah. no, there's no, yeah. Like I, I mean, mean, with <laughs> no, with no option of zooming. And it's a pain oh, in the ass nice. because like, I want to, I want to enjoy the image, but I also want to be able to read the words if it's like, um, but you know. Um, yeah. So if, if you have oh, access yeah. to a tablet of some kind, that will be like, it's would, not the exact same reading experience as would my old phone comicology. Work? Would my phone do the trick? I don't know. I haven't tried that. All right, I'm going to yeah. try that next time because Jesus, it's like, yeah, I, this page is virtually unreadable. Like, am I just supposed to skip it? Like, what do you want me to do? Well, that, that's one of the things I like about DC Infinite is well, I can do the panel view so I can read everything because especially with a lot of old comics, you know, the, the lettering wasn't always top notch. Let's face it. Some of those Silver Age and Golden Age, you know, it's all like run together. And so you have high definition dialogue that you can you know look at the panel on a larger big screen so i can't imagine trying to like try to read a double page splash page or you know a double page on that's you know on a computer and it's the size of a panel i yikes well donnie here's yeah. what i want you to do okay i want you to contact dc infinite okay <laughs> and tell them that there are fans outside of the united states Right. I would like to pay them for their service. Yes, like me in Canada. I'm look. I'm not in. I'm not in uh, Timbuktu. I'm not on Crypto. <laughs> I, I do, like I hello. Like North America, Canada is part of North America. Uh, you know, like I I like to Warner Brothers because I know you can contribute. You you own DC Comics, Warner Media, whatever you want to call yourself. I want to give you money. Yeah, let me give you money. Makes sense. Like, I don't understand it. That's the other thing, too. Ever since the the comicsology shift happened, anybody who lives outside of the United States can't have subscriptions yeah, to books it, anymore. And, and look, I'm a, I'll admit it. I'm a lazy bugger. Like, I like the fact that I subscribe to the thing and it shows up in my email saying, hey, your issue's ready. Now I gotta, now I gotta check the release date. Is it out yet? Is it out yet? It's like, geez. And yeah. it's fine if you're subscribed to one or two series. But when you got, like, more than five, it's a pain. <laughs> couple things i want to point out before we give our rating number one if you are a fan of naomi uh naomi aka powerhouse is in this book um so that's another reason to buy it if you are a fan of the cw series also i want to say there is another variant this month that is the black history month variant cover that is absolutely gorgeous i went ahead and bought all three physical copies the regular cover the variant cover and the black history month cover they are gorgeous. They are well worth your money if you're still into physical media. Breaking news, Donnie bought all three variants. <laughs> if you're shocked, leave a comment in the, in, 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 uh, on the channel. <laughs> um, but um, no, I actually awesome. did a TikTok video on the Black History Month variant. Okay, so, all right. so yeah. check out his TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, and the cover we should say is a, uh, is a very, very nice painting of <laughs> John Stewart and Sojourner Moline by Alex Alexis Franklin. Yeah, and yeah, it just yeah, it's, it's really really nice. Yes. Also, can they give us digital a copy like with, with the digital copy? Give, give us those covers. Like, what's didn't the they idea? didn't they used to do that? Yeah, they didn't used very... to, and then they're like, "Yeah, screw you, people." Now I'm I'm pretty sure they still throw them in on like digital trades or everything. Maybe but... yeah, the trades yeah, but the, the single. The single issues, they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> but um, but no, um, all right. So, um, the, we usually um, we usually rate things uh, five for story and five for art. So, Dan, you were the guest of honor. So, go ahead and, and give us your rating on this issue. Oh boy. Um, for sto out of five. So okay. So yeah. the sto the story. The story, it, honestly, it was it was a little light compared to what we're used to seeing from the Thorn Run. There wasn't that much to dig in, to dig into and like interpret, but um, it it supplemented that by just being like um, bouncing off the wall, good exciting time. So, on in terms of story, I I guess I don't know. I if I enjoyed it. 
but it wasn't very meaty. So I will say out of five, it was like three and a half to four. All right. And in terms of art, you know, Tom Rainey is a very contentious, love it or hate it art style for the series. And we haven't really seen him much for the last few issues. And part of me thinks he was just taking time to make this one look good. Because I think this is probably, this issue is probably his best work on the series so far. It was still a little wonky in some areas. So some, yeah. some faces looked yeah. like some heads were a little too big and some proportions were still a little messy. But I think this is his best work on the book so far. I would, I would give it a four. All right. Cool. Donnie? Yeah, great expert analysis there. I, um, just because <clears throat> this was so intricate in terms of art, and yeah, there was a couple minor little things that I could have said, yeah, th this needs a little bit of improvement, but because there were so many characters and so many elements happening, I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. Story, the same. I'm going to say it, it was good because it wasn't as intricate and as some of the previous issues because it didn't need to be. We're coming to the end of this and we're still getting answers, but a lot of this was action. So I'm going to say 4.5 for the writing and it probably would have been a five had I known where Kyle is. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and that's so unfair for me to say that. <laughs> I'm, again, I'm just shocked that you would mention that. Uh, um, we're no, we're going to get it next issue. I mean, it'd be uh, next arc. So, yeah. Uh, oh, well, either that or you're going to boycott uh, DC and Warner Brothers, right, Donnie? Okay. No, I would never, you know, I would, you know, <laughs> yeah, hash, I think, you know restore the Rainerverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you're going to see, you're going to see the trades come out. You're going to be like, like demanding they like release the Rainer cut <laughs> of like where they, they put, <laughs> yes. They At put back the in cut. the Kyle Rayner scenes that were obviously like <laughs> they were sketched but never finished. Uh, Good. Yes. Don't give don't give anybody ideas. They'll probably start something. God. Oh Lord. But yeah, no. For me, um, again, yeah. it wasn't as the story wasn't as intricate or, or as past issues. But uh, as Donnie uh, alluded to. Uh, it didn't need to be. Um, this was the big action set piece issue. Um, and, you know, it was a Michael Bay film if it was good. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll give it a four and a half. Uh, and then for the art, uh, beautiful work here. Um, it really was so immersive. Uh, a lot of wow uh, moments that just had me staring at the art and sometimes because comicsology wouldn't allow me to read the words but um, uh, that's uh, neither here nor there but the art was fantastic so I'm going to go ahead and give the art uh, <coughs> overall uh, an overall five so that, that's where I am with this issue but I can't wait to see how, uh, how where, where uh, issue 12 uh, takes things and then leaves things so I, I'm going to be counting the days I can't wait till issue 12 now to see mm -hmm how things you know finally shake out after a year of again very detailed writing and you know setting this up and posing questions and answering questions and then posing new questions to us we finally get to see where all this was headed so i'm very interested to once this arc is done to go back and reread the whole thing including future state yeah. because it's it is i had this bizarre experience a few months ago where I had been feeling like the book was slow paced, but then I thought I tried to find a specific reference for something and I could, I could have sworn it happened much later after this other thing, but oh no, that was the next issue. And like when I really started looking, taking stock of like, oh yeah, what exactly happened in each issue of this run, this book has been moving along like at a sprint it just yeah. didn't feel like it month to month. So mm -hmm. like, I, I have to imagine somebody who waited for the trade on this or who has just been laying the issues pile, pile up probably had a completely different experience than somebody who has been following the issues as they come out. So I'm, I'm really interested to see 
how this feels as one complete package. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be interesting to do. I, I went back and reread some of the, like the first six issues when we got into like the second arc of this 12 issue run and the dialogue starts to hit differently when you know how some things have turned out. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. And awesome. Jeff Thorne, I mean, he's been dropping us like little seeds from the beginning. It was just up to us to figure all of them out because and, and a lot of the i mean some of these concepts came from areas like the you know the the magic wielders with the bright circle we didn't know who the bright circle was but a lot of this is coming from areas and with aspects that we usually don't get in green lantern books yeah it, so for the, even those of us with extensive green lantern knowledge the answers weren't evident right away yeah yeah and, and, and at first it was a little annoying because it's like oh I don't know anything about the new gods. What are we doing here? But <laughs> it, in in hindsight, it's it's almost no different than like you know when Robert Venditti decided to to play with the larger DC universe by bringing in you know Zod and the new mm-hmm. gods also, and also and then the Dark Stars and and Grant Morrison did a lot of that with like whatever sci-fi concept he could think of, he incorporated it into Green Lantern. So like. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I like the fact that you know Jeff's been leaving us with 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 he answers some questions, but then leaves us with more questions. Yeah, and and w- when he does it, I'm I'm intrigued. When Morrison does it, I'm just confused, and it's like uh, <laughs> I, like I'll take the more questions as long as I have a general understanding of what the hell I'm looking at and, and reading. So you know, yeah. it's, when Morrison well, does it, it felt like they were just kind of showing off that they remembered this obscure silver age flash comic book mm-hmm. and what with when thorn does it it's it, yeah yeah he's got like a he's got a narrative point there's a it. plan it's not like i'm wondering when i'm like when i would sit down to read morrison's run it's like okay do i need to be on hallucinogens to get what the hell i'm gonna read or like, <laughs> what, 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 that that run was a struggle uh, and, you, and you but, and you can make the argument with thorn's run that like like should you have to look up like quantum theory to understand get an inkling of what's going on in this story you shouldn't and you probably don't but it can help <laughs> yeah, yeah. let me say this about jeffrey thorne whenever i have spoken with him if you come at him respectfully oh, like yeah. on social media and ask him a question he's probably going to answer it for you very respectfully but the key is you can't come at him in a way that you wouldn't want someone to address you. That's been a lot of the issue, I believe, with some fans. Every time I've asked him a question, like I literally went into his went to his Twitter and said, can you explain exactly to me what happened with Amanita? Because I have an idea of how Amanita saved Jon Stewart, but I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> and he explained it to me. I mean, it's pretty basic that if you're polite to somebody, chances are you'll get a decent response. I also want to say this too. uh, say this to you too, Dan. Mm -hmm. I love your video so much because even though I have read, I mean, I always read anything Green Lantern related, even if it's off in some other title. And it's like a a character like circa 2029. Oh yeah. I hear of a Green Lantern. I want to read it, but I've been reading comics for so long now that even stories I have read, when I go back and watch your videos, you mentioned things that I know that I've read, but I have forgotten about. And it helps me so much as a podcaster because, you know, like uh, uh, last year, I read a Hulk comic book that I know I loved as a kid because I, I had this comic and I wore it out, but it was from 1982. And I only had vague impressions of what was inside it. And so it was like reading it for the first time. Yeah. I watch your videos for like refresh, refresh, uh, refreshers on what I've read before. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that this story connects to this other story. Someone like yourself who makes those videos and breaks things down and explains things in the way you do. It's so helpful for fans of this franchise. So I encourage everyone subscribe to the Mosaic Comics channel. You will not be, um, oh, yeah, you, you will not be disappointed in this channel at all. It's a beautiful thing. It's fantastic. And with that, uh, with that segue, thank you, Donnie. Why don't we get, why don't we get to some social media plugs? So uh, Dan, where can people find you if they, uh, if they want to keep up with you and, and your videos and such? Well, for my videos, you can go to YouTube and search mosaic comics. 
or go to youtube.com slash C slash mosaic comics and you know just come enjoy my favorite thing with me like it started out as as a project to keep me occupied and thinking positively during the the start of COVID quarantine Mm -hmm. and and now it's it's almost been two full years and I'm happy to say the biggest problem I'm having is still the fact that I have too many ideas for good videos about Green Lantern that I don't have time to make them all Uh, other than that you know uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mosaic Comics and and if you're if you're listening to this and you're you're not really into watching YouTube videos. I also publish the scripts for most of my videos as a blog over at uh, mosaiccomics.blogspot.com. So mm-hmm. it, I know there's a sizable chunk of comic fandom that that will maybe go as far as listen to podcasts, but really their bread and butter is reading comic book blogs. So hopefully some of you will give that a shot too. Awesome. Awesome. You could also find his old episodes on the Lantern cast. They have their entire library there. I've gone back and listened to to episodes from, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010. Oh boy, and yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm reading something old, I'm like, "Oh, I wonder what Dan thought about that. Let me go find that old episode, you know." And then you start, then you immediately turn it off and get sad because <laughs> no, like, "Oh, it was so never. bad." <laughs> I ba- I barely got that was that really was like Cause like I got into podcasting after being a fan of comic geek speak in 2007 and, and being like, being like really active on their forums and for about a year and talking about green lantern on there mm-hmm. whenever I could. And then one day a guy named Jim, who I'd never talked to before, but was also a fan on their forums messaged me and said, Hey, I'm tired of waiting for another podcast to focus on green lantern. Want to just make one. And I'm like, I don't even know which end of a microphone you talk into, but sure, let's do it. And then five years later, we were just, we we're figuring it out in a, in a landscape where it was so early that 90% of the people who even knew what a podcast was, was the people making them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and like, like, like you had two options. You, you could copy the, the, the podcast that you already listened to or you could just make it up as you go along. And we just kind of spent five years learning the hard way how to do this. So if, and, and Hey, the lantern cast is still out there. I'm, I'm on it like once or twice a month, but you know, Chad and Mark are, are keeping the flame burning. They're, they're the torch bearers, I guess. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I, you know, I always encourage everyone in the green lantern fandom. I'm like, you know, if people found this, you know, this mythos through me, I'm like, Hey, that's great. I love that you listen to our podcast and come to my Twitter page. But I'm like, there are lots of other people out there that I think you should be listening to. And I often, you know, I mentioned the Lantern cast, the blog of Ola and, you know, Mosaic, obviously your channel. I tell people, I'm like, look, if you want a brief, but very succinct explanation of something, go to Mosaic comics, look at that channel. He's probably broken it down for you in a very digestible way. Yeah, and I have the benefit of working off of a a tightly tuned script, <laughs> so I can I can get to the core of something in like seven or eight minutes. But it's a completely different experience from listening to a podcast where a group of people have a conversation about it. Mm-hmm. And like that's the thing. Like I think there's probably a lot of people out there that think like, well, I I watch these videos, or oh, I already listened to this one podcast over here. I don't need to listen to multiple sources talk about the same issue of green lantern or whatever i would say i would argue that you know you probably do because different people are going to have are going to bring different things to it and have different experiences with it so if you want like a really well-rounded review of you know green lantern number 11 listen to emerald echo watch mosaic comics listen to the lantern cast read the blog of oa you know mm-hmm. you're going to get such different perspectives it's similar it's similar to the way that you can give the same power set to hundreds of green lanterns and yet all of them use it differently mm-hmm. in a unique fashion <laughs> like mm-hmm. you're going to get something different out of all mm-hmm. of it so why not give all of it a shot See that that's a perfect image. Well yeah. That see that's I knew that we that we hit a home run 
a grand slam, excuse me, a grand slam by inviting him on this podcast. I knew that we'd have a wonderful episode. Adam, yeah, using so. baseball references is just <laughs> oh, oh, okay. over my head. It's going to be a hat, hat yeah. trick. My bad. There, there we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> no, but uh, Donnie, speaking of, of, of keeping up with you and talking more Green Lantern, because I know you can't get enough of it. So where do they, where do they do that with you like, on social media? You can find me on Twitter as The Emerald Enthusiast and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Emerald Enthusiast. I do lots of product reviews. Many of them are Green Lantern, but I also delve into Marvel Legends and the Masters of the Universe and many geeky franchises. So please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. If you want to be coerced into spending money on action figures, definitely watch his product reviews. It's, uh, it'll do the trick in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> but um, if you want to talk with me about Green Lantern or any of the 400 other things I discuss on podcasts, you can at Adam underscore least fan on Twitter. Uh, we also have the Facebook group, which is somewhere in the link below. Click that. I will add you and we can continue the conversation there if you so choose. Uh, but until next time, remember that Green Lantern is forever from the first issue to apparently beyond the number 12. <laughs> so long, everybody. So long, everyone. Bye.